why we need government-run, universal, socialized, call it whatever you want, health insurance. All right, so we all know from basic civics class and just being alive that a lot of essential services are already government-run, universal, socialized, whatever you want to call it. Think water treatment, police, fire, postal service, coast guard, all those things you know are going to be there for you every single day without even thinking about them. We all pay our taxes and the government uses the money to pay for the things everyone needs just to get by. Now, healthcare is just as essential as any of these services. Sure, a few of us may be lucky enough to make it through our whole lives without some kind of medical problem, but the rest of us depend on healthcare at some point during our lives just to get by. Besides its essentialness, there's another reason health insurance is just like those other government-run, universal, socialized, whatever you want to call them services. That's this. Very, very, very few people can afford to pay, all on their own, the cost of health care when disaster strikes and they or someone they love gets really, really, really sick. So we all need insurance, which basically means we need to pool our money together enough so that when any one of us gets really, really, really sick, there's enough money in the pool to pay for that person to get better. That's insurance. But who should we choose to manage the pool of our money and dole out the money to the people who need it? Well, private insurance companies are the ones who do it right now. But there's a problem. On average, these companies take out 10 to 20 cents out of every dollar we put in the pool. Some of that 10 to 20 cents they spend on administrative costs, processing paperwork and paying for ads to get more people to sign up. But some they use for things that aren't even remotely connected to caring for people's health, like paying for political campaigns to fight against health insurance reform, for example. Of course, some of the money they just take out as pure profit. Who gets the profit? Investors, generally wealthier people who have money to invest. Now, insurance companies are ultimately responsible, accountable to their investors. The more profit the executives at insurance companies make, the bigger their bonuses. It turns out that one of the best ways of increasing profit is denying people coverage for their health problems. That's why insurance companies try to do this as much as they think they can get away with it. Which brings us to the biggest reason why we need government-run health care. Profit wouldn't be part of the equation. That means the government would spend more of our insurance pool on actually caring for people's health. Probably much more. The Medicare program, for example, a real live model of government-run health insurance, only takes two or three cents out of every dollar in the pool for administrative costs. They take zero cents out for profit. That means more money goes to actually curing sick people. Some people seem to think that government health insurance could never be as efficient as private free market insurance. I'm not sure why they think so. The government certainly runs lots of other essential services really well. Police, fire, water treatment, all those services I talked about before. Just imagine if instead of being public, government run, and free, you had to buy fire insurance like people buy health insurance today. First, you'd have to try to understand a 100-page fire insurance policy with lots of legal terms nobody but fire insurance lawyer specialists can understand. Then either you or your employer would have to pay the insurance company with money from your paycheck to join the plan. Then, of course, 10 to 20 cents out of every dollar you gave the company would go to administration and profit instead of hoses and other tools. And what if there were a fire? You'd have to call around and make sure you found a fire station that was in your insurance company's preferred provider network. Then the fire trucks would come and put out the fire, but wait, that's not the end of the story. It may turn out that the small print fire insurance legal language in your policy says that the particular type of fire in your house wasn't covered by your insurance plan. Or maybe you had a pre-existing fire burning in your backyard barbecue, so the insurance company won't pay the fireman. Now you owe the fireman hundreds of thousands of dollars. You'd mortgage your house to pay them back, but it's not worth much because it was so badly burned in the fire. It turns out that fire insurance is just fine the way it is. Free for everyone, paid for by our tax dollars with nobody skimming profit off the top. And that's the way health insurance should be too.